so, so I just yeah oh, okay I'll just but, say I just uh, wanted to call this meeting to kind of talk about capacity planning and I'm so happy that you know we started ramping up with yourself and Bob doing it and I think you're making you know it's like been really really nice having that take uh, come well, off it's a huge plate. load off your it's a huge yeah. amount also, of your the, plate the, so the, other, the other reason you know other people have pinged me and they're like it's so nice to see other people doing this so <laughs> it's, it's been noticed by other people as well so thanks for that um no you're welcome I think it's an important thing and it should be shared um yeah there's still some changes to... i think that we need to make though because yeah. when i did the process i mean bob's been doing it um since he took yeah. it over from you and then i did it uh yesterday and i think that there are just some adjustments we need to make to it yeah. um but yeah. i wanted to get that, what hear what you've that said was, first that, was, that was exactly that, it so. like in the spirit of like <clears throat> Kaizen or constant improvement or, or whatever I just wanted to kind of talk through the things that I wanted to exactly like that I uh, wanted to see um and I think the the first thing is that like because of where I am in the organization and my tenure and every and the experience I have like a lot of these issues I feel I can kind of go in and and so when I was doing it I could kind of be the DRI on those issues for quite an extended time and sort of drive them forward. But at the, at the cost of that being quite an expensive thing because I was spending a lot of time on it. But one of the things that I really, and, and this we should discuss, but like um, it's the first thing I wanted to talk about is, is really kind of push to get a DRI on these issues early and try and find someone, you know, we, 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 we find the issue and then kind of, even if it's like less than a week, so, so we don't have it like two weeks in a row where we go through the same items and not have them assigned. Like, I think it's really important that we get them onto people and, and get someone owning the issue so that we can kind of drive them forward. And I think that's kind of my key takeaway is, okay. is really just, and, and kind of spreading that out um, and getting people because um, I noticed that that was like the main thing you were saying on the call yesterday is who's exactly. going to own this, who's going to own that. And and when when I was doing it, I, I was probably less kind of um, intense about that because I knew that I would probably spend, you know, a few more hours here and a few more hours there over the course of the week, maybe investigating um, and actually doing that digging myself until I was like absolutely sure, okay, this is going to be owned by this team. And then I'm kind of by then it didn't need um a volunteer thing because i'd actually spent you know i put in the extra time and sort of beyond a reasonable doubt to say you know this is where this this lands and now you know either we need to make the choice that that yourself or bob and you know probably more an ic role than a than a manager role just because you've got so much stuff in your plate already but um either either we need to spend the time in doing that kind of extra work in in finding um who can own them beyond a reasonable doubt or we need to kind of get that buy-in earlier so that by the next week like what i'm trying to avoid is it becoming like a status update where there are these items that are kind of week after Just week like, yeah you know and, and i want well, them to be like really actionable and like this is a problem and and you know you're welcome to shut it down and say actually it's not a problem or, or but but if we kind of push it out earlier it'll get more buy-in i think um, well I was thinking, uh, I mean, I, I very much agree, like they have to have an owner and the owner has to be the so on the team that is responsible for actually moving it forward. But I think yeah. that the, there also needs to be someone on the projections team that is the like the counterpart for helping with questions and helping interpret what they see, because we're still having situations where people don't quite know how to un like don't quite know how to interpret the yeah. data that the systems yeah. are giving them. And I think that yeah. when when we go through the report this is something else i want to come to but yeah. like to, at the point that we're going through the report and we see the alert being able to say okay this is a new thing that is showing up who in the projections team is going to like babysit this one for now and then it becomes on the plate of the actual team yeah. who owns it and they get not only the graph that says this is looking bad but they also get the first pass analysis from us to say we've yeah. interpreted the graph and this is yeah. what what we see how can we work together yeah. to move this forward but you're going to own it so okay so in that case that i think that's like reasonable and um then it's going to need to be more time devoted to it than you know just the the, the afternoon before the meeting like 
Well, you know, the, well, this that's is the... where that's where we need to. That's where we would need to allocate like a day or two, like I used to do, right? Well, the other thing that I was thinking of is um, changing the cadence that we respond to the reports. So mm. I, I agree that we should have them in the engineering allocation meeting, like constantly. Like I think if if it drops out of there on a weekly basis, the yeah. momentum gets lost. So I think keeping also, them there is a good are, thing. So there are things that we catch because we're reviewing it on a weekly basis that could get bad um, if we didn't catch that. You know, there are things where you know I'm thinking of like Redis memory leaks and stuff where it goes up very quickly and because we look at that on a weekly basis we're able to, to to nip it in the bud so if do you think if we did it on a two weekly basis that it would be bad i i would have concerns around that i think because there there are you know there was the one thing that comes to mind immediately was i was off for a week and i didn't hand over to to Naren. um and so we didn't really have a capacity plan i think Naren might have been aware as well but it was it just wasn't formally was defined missed. And uh, somebody else actually spotted it and the week later, you know, and it was one of those things that it was like, it could have happened any time, but it happened that one week that no one looked, um, except somebody, I think Sam or someone spotted this thing. And the question was raised, why wasn't somebody looking at this? And if, and if somebody, you know, it was actually just by luck that somebody spotted, um, I think it was a Redis memory issue at that time. But if okay. we hadn't caught it, like, I think a week, you need to have it on a weekly cadence um, okay. Because those things can go wrong quickly. Well, Not then I think them, what we well then I think what we also need to do, and you know, perhaps this is just that I haven't spent a lot of time enough time with the with the graphs and the alerts, but I also found when I went through it yesterday that it felt, um, it felt like it was all over the place in terms of the first alert is about net, and the second one's about Sidekick, and then the third one's about. Yeah something else and going yeah. through the alerts and going through that it feels like your brain yeah. is hopping all over yeah. the place for all of the yeah. different services so so i wouldn't the i mean i would almost consider turning the, the alerting was like a sort of semi attempt at dog fooding what gitlab can do but i i would i would say it might be actually worth considering just turning that alerting off because it doesn't add a lot of value. It's very noisy. And like you said, it, it, it does, it's not presented well. There's very little that we can do in terms of the layout or adding, you know, we, and- Yeah, I'm trying to copy paste out of that giant big yeah, JSON string it's, it's, in the middle. It's and, horrible. Yeah. Um, so, so I, mean, so, I would say, like, I, I almost never use it. And that's one of the reasons why the alerts section is so, you know, if anything, I will just go in there and turn it into an incident. Um, but that's it. Like a, that's not adding a lot of value, right? Like I can do that manually. You know, normally I just kind of change it into a normal anyway, the normal issue. Sorry, I'm having um, in my internet. So do is... you want to do you want to consider turning off those? Oh, yeah. So just give me a sec. My internet is being um, intermittent. Yeah, my internet is intermittent. I'm just going to change uh, my okay. connection. Right, let's see if that's better. And is that better? Is that better? Okay, now I can just not hear you though. Okay. Um, there we go. <clears throat> You're back. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. back. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, cool. um, so then a quick question before, because I agree, I, I think I'm going to yeah. turn it off. But so the it when the reports are generated, it was also generating an alert. And that's what is getting sucked in here was just the alerts. And then you were turning the alerts into issues. Into Yeah, incident slash issue. It's kind of this dual thing. Thing. Know, with life now. Yeah. So in terms of going forward, you think once the report is generated, a human pauses it and then creates yeah. the issues as they see they need to. Yeah. Um, I mean, we could, we could carry on trying to improve the alerts and but I, I think that it, it's, you know, worthwhile going through it. Like, I don't want to become too complacent and say, well, you know, we've got the alerts to the point now, because there will always be something that, like, I think having a human reviewing it, I mean, let's be honest, the, the reviewing of the report isn't the longest, isn't the most difficult part, right? It's, it's, no. It takes a bit of time, but like, it helps you spot patterns and trends. 
I think that it's the chasing up people, it's the investigating, it's the you know finding a DRI and trying to get someone to own those issues that I think is the time consuming bit. Yeah. Um, so I would say let's just like focus on keeping the human elements in there for now, and maybe we can sort of consider how we would improve that and automate that over time. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then I have another question. Um... I'm just opening up Tamland so I can ask it in the context of what yeah. I see. Um, <clears throat> I see at the moment that um, Patroni and PG Bouncer and Redis yeah. and CI runners, like those were, those were split out into their own sections, but then there's still a yeah. whole section, like the, the, the yeah, utilized up stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's I think where I was having yeah. the biggest yes. trouble yesterday it, it was is, here because there's also Petroni yeah. stuff still in here. So, yeah. so, so what we can do is, I mean, the the I I agree it's it's a bit of a mess and it kind of comes from all we had in the beginning was this big jumble sale of, of, of <laughs> everything of, was uh, there. Yeah, everything was here, and then slowly we've extracted things out. And we haven't extracted things out completely perfectly, like you say, like there's this Petroni. Um, yeah, it's there, but it's still in the page that you're here. on now. So, so, it's, so it's can because we... this, is, this is a different Petroni, right? So this is called Petroni CI. And technically it's a totally different service, but we should basically put it into, you know, it, so it why should don't be we with just, the other Petroni stuff. So why don't we just make it on the left-hand side, get rid of Petroni, Redis and CI runners and just make it all this like by service yes so okay. uh yeah that's that's um i mean i do have this kind of um other writer that i've that i've considered as well which is that um we kind of break tamland and our metrics up a little bit further and instead so at the moment what we do is tamland like doesn't know the the topology of our of you know all the different services that we've got and we use this kind of weird hack we kind of query metadata out of prometheus in order to figure out the services but because it's very limited metadata that we have in prometheus you can kind of see here like we never refer to this as the you know we all we have is this identifier right we don't have like the name of the service or like what the dashboards for the service are we, there's, there's, well, we, we can kind of very vaguely assert, uh, as, uh, you know, we can do a few things, but we don't have a lot of metadata. And sort of a more longer term goal would be to actually give Tamland its own definition, which is like a YAML file, which says all the different services. And then we generate that just before running Tamland. We generate it and we give it like a, you know, and then this can be, Instead of just saying this, it can actually give, you know, when you go look at the service in, um, you know, if I go through to, I'm just going to take this dashboard as an example. Just give me a second. Yep. <clears throat> um, if I go through to here and then I choose saturation detail and I choose that, what was that? PG ID, uh, ID 4. So if I go through, so, you know, this is just one example. It doesn't take you to the direct dashboard. It takes you to this generic one because it doesn't have the metadata to know what the real dashboard is. But here you can see it's got all this information about the saturation metric is and you know what it what its impact on GitLab is. And what to do next. Yeah, exactly. Um, but we don't have that in Tamland because Tamland is only using the information that's that it can get hold of in Thanos, right? Which is very limited. Um, and so it kind of makes us up and it's, it's made it a little bit hacky. And so what I was thinking we could do is if, if Timeland a, um, like a, like a YAML file, which describes each thing that we're measuring, and then we can put in there all of this nice information, you know, so in the, in the thing over here, instead of just saying this, it would also have this information, you know, this measures the int for capacity, and we have a lot more information we could put in there. Um, and then and then this report would, would include all of that, but also it would mean that we could break things down much more clearly because we can generate that YAML file instead of at the moment where we actually kind of each of these things we're kind of hand coding another um, Jupyter um, tech, you know, book 
and that's yeah. not really going to scale that much further because if you go look at the source of these each one is effectively like a hand coded Jupyter notebook yeah um there's a slightly I'll, I'll be honest and there's a slightly um ulterior motive as well and that means that Tamland becomes something that other people in other organizations can use it's not totally rigidly de like defined by our um by by exactly what our uh, metrics look like like at the moment no one else could use it because there's only one place that uses metrics in this way and that's us and if we if we move to that uh yaml definition people could use it as well or we could even think about putting it into the product if we wanted or anything like that because yeah. the, the definitions become much more flexible and people can put different ones in so but that's well, a, think, that's well, down the road two, you know i think that those two changes so one making it um page yeah. by service and the second yeah. thing is linking to the further alert in the further information that's available in grafana they're just like yeah. bringing it across into here makes it yeah. makes the process of of assessing the report faster and easier and yeah. more focused yeah and um, once we have that metadata we can start adding more metadata as well like we can add yeah. things you know like obviously on some of the dashboards we have those links that would go straight to prometheus and we can, you know, we open ourselves up for those kind of features. We're at the moment but we're, also we're, we're very but, limited. And the thing that I see next is also, if you flick back to Tamland there, is you can also then have a section that says, is someone actually working on this? Where is the issue, like link yeah. the issue where this is being addressed? Yeah, we could, we could, um, yeah, exactly. Because <clears throat> we could use metadata to to query the uh, GitLab. Yeah, and, and I think we're using that, um, like there there is a, it, it, I mean, all of these issues are, in the capacity planning project already so it's just a case of saying well here is the issue where yeah. this is being talked about and then in that issue it links out to this is the one in the GitLab or GitLab project and this is the DRI and all of that but having this having Tamland be much more of a dashboard yeah. for everything or a landing place so I'm just keeping an eye on the dog, dog. No. Just, uh, yeah, yeah but <laughs> I mean so you know Kong Wins uh, worked on a lot of these things as well yeah. and he's able to very quickly um uh do this but yeah I well think, he's gonna I think we're, we're gonna need to pass the knowledge over as well because huang min was now on yeah. the frameworks team no. we need to have all the knowledge oh, inside okay. of projections. projections um yeah yeah that's okay. that's that's great so who would who would be the point on this oh i don't know yet um yeah. <laughs> we're still, we're still have to figure those pieces out but i think what's important yeah. to start with is um you know there are improvements yeah. that need to be made here so that we're paying more attention to it. Um, yeah. The things that we can do to help make our lives much easier about it. Um, and and these are good places to start. So I think I think we start there and yeah. then we see what happens next. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean, sort of going back to the the feedback, I think the number one thing is that we need to like I don't want it just to become another part of like status report part of that that meeting. Uh, I mean, it's already got like I'll I'll be honest. Like even under my tenure, when I recently when I haven't been able to devote the time to it that I had been before, I do feel a lot like I'm repeating the same thing week after week. And and if 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 the person driving that part of the agenda isn't driving it forward, people start tuning out, and then it becomes you know it loses its its impact. And I really want it to be like, these are the problems, we need to sort these things out like immediately, but that takes time and, uh, and energy. Um, and it's, it's not like straight development time, it's kind of like a slightly administ administrative kind of task, yeah. right? Because you've got to engage with people and get them to kind of- um, but, it's also a challenge to for the, it. but it's also a challenge for the stage groups too, because they're getting so many different inputs from infrastructure yeah. saying you need to do these mm -hmm. things. And now they're getting, uh, you know, there's yeah, infra dev issues that have been reported yeah. that they're not a sort out. And then there's error budgets are just not like yeah. they're not green. So you got to make them green. And then you've got capacity planning. Like they're saying, you've got to look at the yeah. stuff and, uh, and you, yeah. and then along with all of those things, they still have to get the product feature work done. I know. So, yeah. Yeah. so I can I, understand I, why stuff doesn't, yeah. doesn't advance yeah. as fast as we would like it to. And that's also why yeah. I think having a specific person from the scalability team that's aligned with each that, of the that issues great. helps to drive okay. it forward where the where they where they might not be able to because it's one yeah. of those things where we can't really wait um, for yeah. them to have the it's, time 
as long as there's an understanding that we will need to, you know, it's not um, three hours before the call. It is a, it's a much more extended engagement um, in, in that case. And it's really kind of, you know, people will ask questions and you need to reply and, you know, justify your, the, the, the point of view and collect the data. And so, yeah, it is, it is then, it, you know, if you're not pushing it off on teams early, then it is a much more time consuming thing. But I do yeah. think, you know, this is helping us, you know, it, 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 it is beneficial because it's stopping those like, oh, we're at capacity on X. Like, you know, we used to get that all the time. Um, and like, well, we better move really quickly because, you know, this is a big problem now, or this has been a problem for a long time and we haven't watched the, the growth. Um, so, awesome. Yeah. Well, this has been super helpful cool. regarding capacity planning. I have another question or two, but I'm going to hit stop on the recording because this okay. concludes capacity stuff. So, um, 